So who here poops? We have some hands, poopers in the audience? Yeah. Looks like we got a majority non-poopers. Do you guys know each other? Is this like you guys have been communicating about this? You guys should be up here, you know? We learned that lesson. Um, I got to thank uh, Sean Schaffler for that illuminating lesson. And um, so back in 2009, my uh, partner Molly and I were traveling and we found ourselves using a pretty disgusting toilet, and uh, we followed our noses towards uh, where it was discharging uh, uphill from the well we were drinking from. And uh, it was a rainy spring. Um, and that was a uh, shocking experience. Nothing like that had ever happened to me. And uh, it really catalyzed for both of us uh, um, a transition from an amateur interest in, in waste issues to, to working in sanitation. And um, since then, I've, I've found that you can really illuminate this toilet um, just by thinking about, you know, when, during that trip, I, I wanted just a safe, comfortable, familiar restroom experience. And I just, I really just wanted one of these. And yet I found in the years since that there's not much safe or comfortable about this toilet. It, it's merely familiar. And the best way to think about that is to think about three questions I think most people ask themselves when they walk into a public restroom. Can anyone see me? Is it safe? Is it clean? Well, y'all can see me, so we can move on. But <laughs> is it safe? Well, is it safe to sit down? Toilets are safe the way chairs are safe. Unfortunately, chairs really aren't all that safe. Um, and you know, I come from a pretty chair-mad culture. I've been sitting on chairs my whole life. In fact, I, I'm not flexible enough to squat, uh, and so I'm kind of stuck with this whole chair thing. But a toilet is also an appliance, and a toilet is three times more dangerous than a stove. <laughs> and it's kind of surprising. Like, here in the United States, we con have controlled fire in our house more safely than water. And uh, that makes a little bit of sense when you think, well, in the past 150 years, stoves have gotten a lot better, and we have the same flush toilets. And so, as you approach this, you can think, like, well, is it clean? Well, I don't really care if it's that clean, if I'm just going to stand up and pee in it, but I do have to get in, and there's no handle, you know? So I've got to get my fingernails under the seat and lift it up, and now I got one dirty hand, and I haven't even, uh, I haven't even reached in my pants yet. But I got, a, I got an assistant for that. You guys, I spare you guys. So now I'm just like, you know, dribbling pee, two and a half feet down into the toilet bowl. And uh, with predictable results, right? You dribble water this far down, it's, uh, it's going to splash. So it's got this nice penumbra of urine and water just collecting on the ground around the toilet, and uh, it's growing a nice thin film of bacteria that someone is going to have to clean up around this very uncleanable base. Um, but what if I was the kind of person who uh, sat down to pee? Well, first I'd be mad the toilet seats up, but <laughs> then, you know, I probably wouldn't in a public restroom, you know? I'd probably hover, you know? Great quad workout. Worst position to pee from. <laughs> and so we have a seat that wasn't, no one wants to sit on, right? And <laughs> what if I was actually going to sit down, though? So I do, I go to sit down. I gotta, I gotta, get, I gotta go down real carefully. I don't want to dunk my junk on the way in, you know? <laughs> and then I get down on the toilet, and I'm here, I got a whole new fear, right? Splashback. You know, my, my turd could have an equal and opposite reaction of water just coming right back up, ruin the whole moment, right? So, in use, in use, this whole bowl of water, it hasn't done me any favors yet, you know? But it's good for one thing, right? I can just hit that lever and it's, it's probably, oh, you know. 
so it's mostly gone, right? <laughs> it's not coming back to this bathroom. You know, I don't have to worry about it. It's not my problem anymore. Now it's everybody's problem. And uh, I may have made the problem like 10 times, 10 to 100 times larger than it was, but it's gone at least, right? And uh, I'm safe here, but uh, y'all aren't safe out there. You're downhill from me right now. So. You know, and that's where we normally start asking these sanitation questions, right? You know, is it going to make anybody sick? Yeah, probably. And uh, so where can it go to cause the least harm, right? Let's try to get it farther away. The answer's been, well, let's go farther away. And sewers get, they get most of it out of the city. It's hard to tell exactly how much they leak because, uh, you know, they snake in and out of the groundwater, taking on water and leaking a bunch back out. But they get most of it out. And here in Portland, I'm lucky that uh, my uh, poop ends up at one of the world's best waste treatment plants. We have a really good one. But most sewers don't end in waste treatment. And most sewers throughout history have not. You know, as recently as 1990, less than two-thirds of American sewer systems had waste treatment plants in the end of them. And that's not because we didn't know about waste treatment. The waste treatment technologies that most places use are the same ones that have been in, in use for over 100 years. It's because waste treatment is really expensive. Because when we start by diluting the whole problem, it gets really expensive to treat. And so sewage treatment turns out to be a bit of a luxury product. And that's, that's unfortunate because, you know, people deserve a clean environment. And amazingly, here in the United States, when we first built sewers, they were a public health disaster. They saved lives upstream, they killed people downstream. You know, when you take out a 50-year uh, loan to pay for infrastructure for your city, irony isn't really a term you want associated with it. Um, but we came up with some social and technical adaptations to treating our waterways as open sewers. We stopped swimming in them, we stopped drinking them, and then we piped new rivers in to our cities, some very clean ones, and we chlorinate our water. So if we do end up drinking sewage, and uh, most people do end up drinking sewage at some point in the year, at least it's got some chlorine in it. Now whatever's in there is dead. And that's great if you're a person and you're hooked up to uh, you know, the uh, water system, but there are plenty of other things that aren't. And it seems like if sanitation is our value, we've been confusing sanitation with transportation, just getting things away with this system. And in many ways, we've been asking the wrong questions. We've just been trying to get things away instead of asking, well, where do we fit? Is there some place we can put our excrement that could create a benefit, that fits into the ecosystem safely? And I've sat on toilets that, that were designed around this. And they make treatment cheap, and uh, they're pretty comfortable. I've sat in some pretty good ones. I've sat in some good ones right here in this state. There are, uh, there are quite a few, but they're hard to find. They're like a rare bird. And that's because, uh, that's because, you know, in the United States, you know, our government has no definition of poop or pee. I'm not, I'm not kidding. There's no definition whatsoever. We have, we have laws about uh, indecent exposure, and we have laws about uh, sewage treatment. But in between closing that restroom door and having a huge pile of dirty water go out the other side, don't want to hear about it. Don't want to know at all about it. And that makes installing a new, different toilet or any sort of different option hard. And uh, it's not like there's some nefarious conspiracy going on. These rules actually come out of some of our best, our best values and, our, and, and our, our best hope for the world. You know, We want to provide everyone with a clean, private space to clean up, to take care of whatever they got to deal with, and to feel safe and comfortable in their bodies. But it's not that, uh, that space, this isn't helping much, you know? And it's about time that we 
start thinking about how we could stop confusing transportation with sanitation. And you can fix this. You can help fix this problem. And you don't have to go buy a new toilet. You have a sanitation system here in Portland. But you could just start talking a little shit about this antique appliance, you know? <laughs> and help people realize that, you know, you don't need a wet chair that most people don't even want to sit on. Thank you.